Good morning, everyone. Can we just bless the Lord this morning? For he is greatly to be praised. I'm going to read Psalms 24 this morning, and then Minister Karen is going to pray as we go into worship. Amen? Amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up everlasting doors. The King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. We want the King of glory to come in this place this morning. Can we just begin blessing the Lord as we get ready to be led in prayer? Let the worship come from your heart this morning. And let it flood in the atmosphere. Amen. God, we thank you this morning for your for your righteous and your holiness. God, we thank you for your sovereignty, God. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, oh God, to this very place, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you will flood this place, oh God, with your anointing, oh God. Flood this place with your power, oh God. Flood this place with your presence, oh God, so that we can be uh, willing to give you praise, oh God, so that we can enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with a praise on our tongues, oh God. So we bless you, oh God, and we lift you up in this place, oh God, because you're high above the heavens, oh God, and you're high above our minds, oh God. So anything that is trying to come against your people, oh God, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of, 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 of worry, oh God. I break the spirit of anxiety, oh God. I break the spirit of depression right now, God. I break the spirit of lazy Oh God, so that we can come here and give you glory and give you honor and give you praise because you're worthy, oh God. You're worthy of every hallelujah. You're worthy of every of every praise, oh God. You're worthy to be lifted up, oh God. So we lift you up this morning, oh God. We know that the Bible says that, that as we lift you up, oh God, that you will draw, oh God. So we lift you up today, God, because you're wonderful, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
glory to Jesus. Yes. Because you're wonderful, God. Yes. Yes. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. How many of you know that trouble doesn't last all the way? I heard that the Bible says that um, the suffering of this present time isn't worthy to be compared to the glory that will be so revealed in us. So, so we don't have to worry about what's going on right now, the troubles that's going on right now, because one day the glory will arise out of us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I just thank God for who he is.
begin to change your mindset and begin to exercise your mind on things of me. That you don't have to stay at the shape that you're in. That you begin to see yourself blessed every day. You begin to see yourself healed. You begin to see yourself walking in victory. You begin to declare that you are the child of the high most king. You begin seeing yourself walking in confidence and in boldness. That you see yourself doing whatever it is that God has commanded you to do. And he said, when you begin to change your mind and set your mind on me, that it doesn't matter what the world think about you. It don't matter what people think about you. But if you know what God says about you, then you can walk in the boldness and the fullness of his glory. So begin to change your mindset on today. That you don't have to stay in the place that you in mentally. That mentally you can have peace every day. That mentally you can have joy every day. That mentally you can have love every day. That mentally you can be happy every day. That you don't have to be depressed. That's a mindset. That you don't have to have anxiety. That's a mindset. You don't have to be in poverty. That's a mindset. But when you know that your daddy owns everything and you tell yourself that you are rich in wisdom and rich in knowledge, that he gives you the ability to generate wealth, that he gives you the ability to conquer the enemy, that you change your mindset, that you don't have to stay in the shape that you in. And it begins in your mind. And as it gets in your mind, then it gets in your heart. And when it's in your heart, it's in your spirit. That you don't have to walk with your head looking at the ground, but you can walk with the boldness because you like David. You know that God's got your back and he sent the angels before you to make a way for you. So you don't have to worry that every day when you get up, you renew your mind in the things of God. You let the spirit of God overtake you every day and look at the places that he's about to take you. It really means when your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard, but it begins with the mind Set your things on high. There's glory beyond the sky. Every day I've been going looking at the sunrise in the morning. And he tells me in the morning that it's all going to be over in the morning. In the morning. We don't have to worry about this COVID. In the morning. We don't have to worry about trying to find food. In the morning. That somewhere over there beyond that sun when I look every morning. That I meet Jesus and he's there every morning. Every morning. Where the spirit resides. 
God has certainly been faithful to me, and I'm just glad just to be alive. Anybody just excited to be alive? Alive. Amen. Not dead, but alive. Got some plastics in the grave, but you know what? I'm still here. Amen. 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 Death these days don't have an age. It don't matter. No Amen. age restriction. Amen. Amen. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. Amen. Amen. Glad to be in the presence of God. One more time. Amen. 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 Anybody glad to be in the presence of God? Amen. Amen. We, got, we can't take these moments lightly, y'all. You remember just a few months ago, we could come in the church house and be able to worship together and praise together, you know, so let's not forget where God has brought us from. I know there's some folks that scared to come to the house of God, but you are here, so give God a praise. Amen. 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 You can go by hand, but can't come in. Amen. 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 Stop right there. I'm going to behave myself. But yeah. well, I tell you what, when I'm coming to the house of God, I got a different fire, a different. Yeah. I don't care what, I, what happened on yesterday. I don't even care what happened this morning. But when I come into the house of God, yeah. amen, I feel, David, now I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My feet shall stand within thy gate. Come on, somebody. My feet shall stand within thy gate because I'm glad about it. Hallelujah, but then I'm glad to be in the house of the God. Amen. 2026, that go farm boulevard is a nice house, but it ain't nothing like the house of God. Come on, somebody. Yes, hallelujah. Just glad y'all can sit down if you want to. You don't, you don't have to. Amen. But I'm just glad and excited to be in the house of God. That's all it is. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm all right. Amen. I didn't have to take no medicine this morning. I just came on to church and you know, just ready to give God a praise. Amen. It's good to see everybody in the house Glory. today. Glory. Amen. We thank God for the praise. See, let's give God a praise for you. Doing such a fabulous job. Amen. Allowing God to use them. Amen. You don't even realize how they pressed their way this morning, but they did. Amen. For sacrifice of God and to give God a sacrificial praise. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it is a sacrifice because when you're pressed and you're tired, Amen. Sometimes you just don't feel like it. Amen. Amen. But that's when we tap into what God has done for us. Amen. 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 So I especially want to give a shout out to Sister Frederica. I know she don't want me to do it, but I don't care. I'm the pastor. I just thank God for her, y'all. She works doubles and she comes to practice and she comes to church on Sunday and she serves. And so I thank God for her and her sacrifice. I roll your eyes at you, Frederica. I see you. Amen. But I'm serious, though, you know? Amen. That sacrifice. I thank God for that. It's the small things. It's the small things. Amen. So I'm excited about that. Amen. I give God a praise for my worship leader on today. Amen. The Amen. She can't put the fire all the time. Amen. Amen. And I thank God. I definitely thank God for my wife. Amen. 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 Had, a, had an adventurous night last night. Thank God I made it. Amen. Amen. It's another day's journey. And I'm glad. Stupid, I'm glad he ain't here. We go here this morning. Amen. Amen. But I am I am thankful um, to be here. And I thank God for my wife and for my daughter and for McKenna. For McKenna. McKenna. Um, McKenna, y'all, let me tell you just a little bit about McKenna real quick. McKenna, that girl is something else. Last night was at my mom's house. And um, there's a keyboard over there. Who was just playing? You know, I play loud, and I was just going in, and then McKinsley over there, she just over there playing with me. And I'm going to tell you what, you should have seen McKinsley's face. I mean, she was over there just smiling, looking at McKinsley like, yeah, I'm about to be doing this soon, too. She's over there like, you need some drums? <laughs> need a bass, I got you, whatever you need. Amen, but I just thank God for that. That's one um, of those memories, and I know a lot of you, you have children that's either my age or over, so I know that you understand how those moments are precious. Amen, so I'm going I'm to... I'm going to, you know, brag on my children, amen, because I'm thankful for them. Amen. I know they're a gift from God. Amen. 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 We thank God for everybody that is amen. here. Amen. amen. It's good to see Shania, amen, amen. in the house. Amen. amen. It's good to see Quinta. Amen. 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 She at home anyway, but I still amen. call her out. Amen. amen. Better say that. She better be glad I'm giving her some grace today. I, I really have to go singing, but anyway. <laughs> I ain't gonna do you. I ain't gonna do you like that today, Amen. But it's good to see everybody, Amen. Good to see everybody, Amen. amen. But mind, you got a song. You got some music. Yes, he does. Come on, mind. <laughs> you got some music. Come on, sir. Spot it up. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I just don't miss those moments. Yeah. Come on. 
If you have, if you're a note taker, this is a good Sunday to take notes if you're a note taker. If not, just go back later and, and really pull it out. And I'm, I welcome you to challenge, um, challenge this word today and um, go and study and see if Pastor Mike is, is trying to preach his doctrine or if he's trying to preach the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't mind doing that at all, having that conversation with anybody. The Bible talks about when Paul would teach um, with the Bereans, the Bereans, Bereans would go back. And they would check and make sure, make sure that what he was saying was the word of God. So if you have the spirit of the Bereans, that's okay. We can come and reason together. Amen. But I just want to, I want to, we got to talk about some stuff today. Amen. And we're still, we're still in, in our um, sermon series, Faith It. Um, God has, has moved upon my heart that we continue on through the month of November. So um, what we're talking about it is about faith. It's faith. This this is what we're talking about today is, is a faith issue. Somebody say faith issue. Faith issue. Amen. We have some faith issues in the church. Amen. There's some things that we just don't know. And I, I want to say this before I get into the word as well. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, Bible study on, on, on Thursday. I always do, but it was something special about this Thursday because I asked them a question. And I tell you what, they went into the deep. I was like, I'm just talking about the scripture. However, it was good because it was conversations that needed need to be talked about. And it was really good. And I'm looking forward to this Thursday because we have some more of that coming. And so I enjoy that. Because there are some things that have been passed down that we don't we don't really know if it's true or not. We just accept it. Amen. But when you try the word and when you go into the word, you're able to expose and to see what's really in there, okay? So um, it's, it's, it's a doctrinal type thing. Yeah. If we're gonna live, we gotta live right. Amen. Live right. If you're gonna be intentional, you gotta be intentionally right. Amen. Amen. So we're going Romans 10. Romans 10. We're starting at that verse 13. Verse 13. And it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Verse 17, which I love. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, today we're going to use for a subject and topic, who told you that? Who told you that? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to be cliche. Turn to your neighbor and say, who told you that? Who told you that? Amen. God, we thank you, Lord, for this moment of preaching, this moment of teaching God, this moment of clarity and understanding and also an opportunity to grow in our faith. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your presence on today. Thank you, Lord, for all that has taken place up to this point. Thank you for deliverance that's in the house. Thank you for the breakthroughs that's in the house. Thank you for the healing that's in the house. Thank you for the impartation of wisdom that's in the house, God. Lord, we just ask that you just continue just to move mightily, God. Use me, God. Lord, this isn't about me, about what I want to do, but God, Lord, I believe that you um, impacted me with the word that you want to share with your people. So God, I'm asking right now, Lord, that you just simply let my thoughts be your thoughts, let my ways be your ways, let everything that I do bring glory to your name, God. Lord, I ask that you have your way, Lord, like you already done. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're using for a topic today, who told you that? Okay? And um, re the reason why, and a lot of times I don't use questions as as, as a title, sermon titles. Um, there's some theologians and some seminaries that say that you should never use a question as a sermon title. But today, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rule breaker sometimes, Brother Hope. And so I want to break the rule because I want to put this question into your spirit so that it can be an ever-residing, an ever-resonating question in your, in your heart, but in your heart concerning your faith, First Lady. Who told you that? Um, Deacon and Frey, if you start my time back over, you can put like 40 on there. <laughs> you don't want my time. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. But it is important that we realize, it's important that we realize that there is a penetration of information, of insight that tries to bombard our life. Okay? And if you would really be honest, and if you really think back and you really reflect concerning your faith, how many things have been imparted to you that you know wasn't God? Okay? Now with that, you can say that, you know, well, they were, you know, they meant well, and that's good, they meant well. But in the case of them meaning well, your soul is at stake. Your faith is at stake. And so we have to be mindful of what's downloaded, check this out, of what we allow to download in our mind. Because that which downloads in our mind downloads into our heart, and what becomes our heart is what we use to fuel our faith. The Bible says, you heard that 17th verse says, what does it say? It says, so faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing. That means that what you hear, it, it has the opportunity to plant seeds into your mind to do a work within you. Amen. That's why we have to be so careful with doctrines that's being taught. We have to be careful about even the domin denominational teachings because there are some things that is being teaching that is man and not of God. Told you, they gonna be one of them shoppers, but it's real. Because listen, if we don't understand doctrine, then we won't understand how to grow in our faith. And if we don't know how to grow in our faith, we won't know how to live for God the way that we should. Why do you think there's so much foolishness around us? Why do you think there's so much foolishness in the church? Why? Because there's no doctrinal understanding that can convict the heart. If you don't have it on the inside of you, you truthfully cannot convict the heart. That's why uh, Paul always told Timothy to teach, study, because there is an ever learning that needs to take place so that you can be who God has called you to be. Now, I want you to think about this. Just imagine if we were all on fire about the word of God and we were on a fire about really living the way and doing what the word says. Imagine what the church would look like. Imagine, check this out, imagine that preachers really study the word of God and then try to get up in front of people and entertain them and try to woo them and try to massage their minds to grab them and to put spells on them. Just imagine if we were really in the vein of God. I don't know if you know yet, but I'm preaching right now. Amen. This thing is serious. It's serious. There's no reason. Dick and Sue say this all the time. The Lord won't have you in it. He will not have you ignorant. That means that, that what you need in James, the book of James said that if any man need wisdom, ask. Ask. And the scary thing is that some people don't want to ask because they're content with what they have. But what they have is corrupt. What they have is poisonous. What they have is tearing their life to pieces. You know what's even scary, evangelists? Is that these pieces are being imparted to the people of God. That's why some people leave the church and they have these battles at home because what's been imparted in their life. I know that's tough, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. We have to be so careful when it comes to the hearing because that what we hear, what's downloaded, it forms, activates, it permeates our faith. And what comes in my life, I don't know about you, but what comes in me, I want it to be of God. Yeah. Amen. We don't have time for no oops. Oops, I'm sorry. No, you need to get into the word and you need to preach this thing like it's supposed to be preached. You need yeah. to teach this thing like it's supposed to be teached. You need to go in the faith of God. You've got to spend time with God to be able to know what God's heart is saying. Amen. But when we look at this chapter, let me get here. Amen, because I'm going somewhere. I'm telling you, y'all. So folk, they might even click off on Facebook, but it's all right. It's all right. Pastor Mike, he's strong, dude. He's strong. But there, there's, there, there's, there's three things that we see in this chapter 10 um, that you need to know that's going on. The 10th chapter of this Pauline teaching, meaning that it's a teaching of Paul, this chapter is talking about salvation in Christianity. And it teaches who qualifies for salvation. It teaches how to obtain salvation and who provides salvation. Now, uh, we realize that in this chapter, I'm going to simply give you a little bit of this. I'm not trying to, trying to park here, but I'm going to give you just a little bit. When it talks about who qualifies for salvation, Paul is letting them know that just the Jews aren't the ones that's qualified for salvation, but the Gentiles as well. Amen. That's the thank you, Jesus, right there, because that means that we are, amen, have been adopted in this thing, in this faith, that we're able to receive the same salvation that the Jews are, because we know the Jews are the chosen people, correct? Amen. amen. But how to obtain salvation, we know, amen, a lot of us come from the Baptist, the Baptist denomination where you come up and you have to what? Confess with your mouth, 
and believe in your heart. That's something that you do right on the spot. Some denominations do it differently. I come from Baptist, so I know that's how you do it. And I believe that's the way that you're supposed to do it because that's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? That you have to confess with your mouth. You know, so many times people say, you know, it's an inner work. You know, God is inner work, inner work in me. Listen, that's a bunch of mess right there. You have got to release it. It has got to release. How many times has the word say confess, confess, confess? I had to confess this morning, amen? But it is through confession because that's you saying, that's you making an established um, thought and decision in the earth that this is what I believe, yeah. amen? So it tells you how to obtain salvation. It says who provides salvation. And we know that Jesus Christ is the one who provides salvation. How did he provide um, salvation? He died on the cross. His blood was shed. Amen. He died and he rose on the third day. And it said that he rose with all power in his hands. Yeah. Amen. Well, actually, he said that. But he did rose with all power in his hands. And he went. Amen. He uh, ascended and he descended. That means that he went to hell. He, he, he dominated that, took over, he left, he went and ascended with his father. Amen. Then the Bible talks about in Acts how he came and he walked with the folk of just a few more days, 40 days, I believe. So if Jesus is the one, he is the way, he's the truth, the way, and the life. He's the one that provides salvation. So that means that without Christ, there's no salvation. Somebody say, without Christ. Without Christ. Say without Christ. Without Christ. There's no salvation. There's no salvation. The Bible says that you have to go through Christ to get to who? The Father. Wow. Amen. So without Christ, it ain't nothing. Somebody say without Christ, it ain't nothing. Christ, if Jesus ain't at your church, you ain't got no church. You got a country club. I ain't mess with y'all today. Amen. But Jesus is the common denominator. He is the thing that is most important. He's the thing that makes sure that this thing exists and that it moves. What I want to share with you right here is that we had an initial moment of obtaining faith. Meaning that initial moment of where we receive Christ. But also we have a progressing, we have progressing moments in our life where we have opportunities to receive downloads from heaven. That means that in the moment when you receive Christ, there was a divine encounter that happened to you. Amen. So now just that, that moment, that does, that's not the end. As you progress in your walk and in your life, you're able to receive more divine moments to be able to have with Christ. And to have those divine moments with Christ, that is called, uh, 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 not just divine, but those are called impartations of strengthening your faith. Because every time you come into the presence of God, there's something that should be different when you leave out of it. Amen. Let me say that again. When you get into the presence of God, when you leave out of it, there should be something that is different. Yeah. Amen. Because that's just how powerful he is. Amen. Sometimes we don't even realize just how powerful his presence is because things have happened and we not even realize it. Amen? There's four divine questions that's in this scripture. I promise you I'm going somewhere. You got to hold on. I got to lay this foundation. If I don't lay the foundation, I'm going to fall. <laughs> Amen? But there's four, there's four defining questions regarding the obtaining of faith. There's four. And in the scripture it talks about in that 14th and 15th verse it says this. It says, How then shall they call on him and whom they have not believed. Amen? Because the previous scripture is talking about being saved and how to do it. By calling for the Lord and those that call upon him shall be saved. The first divine question was, how then shall they call on him and whom they have not believed? It says, how, and, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And it says, and how shall they preach except they be sent. Now, in conclusion, we gain from these questions that the key connected to Christ in the earthly uh, um, intervening voice or in the earth, um, in the earth, in the tangible, in our earthly body, that connector to Christ is commonly known as the preacher. The preacher, the scripture says that the preacher is the one that, that, that preached the word to help them to believe. And it said, how can the preacher go unless he be sent? So we understand that in the gaining of our faith and even the maintaining of our faith, that the preacher is very important. Somebody say the preacher is important. The preacher is important. Why is the preacher so important? Because the preacher is supposed to be a credible source or resource of information. The preacher should be a person that you should be able to trust and that you should be able to rely on and one that you should know that he has, he or she has the word of God. I want to ask you a question. Somebody say get real. Get real. How influential is the preachers in the land right now? How 
influential are they? Amen. Because when you look at different preachers, there's different um, personas, there's different stereotypes, and there's different truths that are out there. We have some preachers that are really preaching the word of God that is trying to get in the word, and some of them are hated because they are preaching what the word says. But then you have some preachers that ain't hitting on nuts, Sister Sheila. They couldn't preach. They couldn't preach a, a, a air off a honey bun. They can't do nothing. <laughs> Why? Because their intent is not to live and to edify the people of God. Amen. But we have to realize, I want you to understand this thing, that you have got to have a preacher in your life. There has got to be someone that is divinely connected to God that can help you in the building of your faith. You have got, somebody said, you have got to. You have got to be connected to a preacher that is anointed, who is anointed that has spent time in the well. Wisdom, the well of wisdom, a preacher that has laid before the Lord, a, a preacher that has a conviction to be able to tell you the truth, even though it might hurt your feelings. He might, he, the preacher might have to tell you something that's going to make you cry, but it's going to save your soul. You've got to have a preacher that's going to direct you and tell you some things that you don't know. You've got to have a preacher. you got to have a preacher. So I'm about to get this thing, sir. So be ready, I'm telling you. Whew. But you've got to have a preacher. You have to have a God sent preacher. You have to have a preacher that understands what it is that God has spoke. They have to understand what God is trying to convey through his word. You've got to have a preacher. Oh, let me tell you, I know that there's some manipulators out there. I know there's some preachers that steal money from the church. I know there's some preachers out there that will sleep with the women in the church office. I know there's some grimy, slimy, disgusting preachers out there. But God has some preachers in the earth that he has placed in your life to make sure that you get what you need. That's why you have to encourage the preacher. That's why you have to lift the preacher. That's why you have to pray for the preacher. Because the preacher is going to attack because of the assignment that has been given. Somebody say, I need a preacher. I need a preacher. Now, I want you to understand this because I went in right there. I know I did. Because I felt that I know I did. Y'all know I can't help it sometimes. But here's the thing. Not only is a preacher one that stands in this pulpit, but preachers are folk that do what you do. What you do. What am I saying? I'm saying that Asia, she a preacher, she ain't know it. I know you had no initial sermon, I know you didn't. But you're a preacher. Well, Pastor, how is she a preacher? Because she's a disciple. A disciple. How many of y'all preach throughout the week? How many of y'all preach to your, your friends, preach to your family? It's not all about us that's up here in the pulpit. Yes, I know I'm divinely connected to you. I know I'm the one to pour into your life. Amen. But I want you to know this, that God has given you jurisdiction in the earth that you can pour into some people, that you can encourage some people. God has anointed you for the task. So not only are those that have the collars and the, the robes and those that stay in the pulpit, not only are they a preacher, but understand that you are a preacher. And God has done that. And you know what? That's Bible. When you go into Mark, when he sent the disciples out, he sent them out to preach. Yeah. That is what a disciple does. Now, that doesn't mean that you might rev up and you do all the theatrics that normal preachers do. You, that might not consist of that. But the job assignment, the job assignment is the thing. That's the important thing. God has called you to be out there and to preach to the priest. Somebody say, I'm a preacher. Oh, man. The key to this thing is that credible information from the word of God reaches the people of God. Amen. And I want to go back because I want to ask you this question. Amen. What preacher are you listening to? I know someone might say, well, I listen to you, Pastor Mike. You preach every Sunday. You teach on Thursdays. But I want to ask you, between, between those moments and times, what preacher do you listen to? Amen? And I'm not talking about those that's in the pool, but I'm talking about those that are around you that yeah. wants to yeah. give you some information. You ever, you ever have some folk around you that just got all the answers? Yeah. But when it comes to their life, you're like, well, I, you know, I don't have to know. I mean, no, you need preachers that can bless your life. Amen? And that you see the fruit within their life. But I'm going somewhere with this because I set y'all up because there are some preachers in the church and some preachers in the world that is not hitting on nothing. I need to know this right here. It's about to get good. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's about to get good. So the preacher I want to talk about right now that 
that is not of God is those psychics and those palm readers. Those that work in sorcery. Amen. There's a lot of us that feel like it's okay to be a child of God, a Christian, and to go to Miss Cleo's house and, and get a word. I've never seen in the church so many folk that are so excited to go to these, these soothsayers. And I'm going to tell you what. There's some psychics in the church. Amen. Look, they tag themselves as prophets, but they're really psychics. Huh? Because they're not tapping into the fullness of God. What's the difference between a psychic and a prophet? Because the prophet hears from God. He's a relay a message. And the psychic here, yes. But the psychic and the soothsayer and all those that work in the sorcery, they have limits. Hmm? They have limits. What they don't get is the secrets of God. We have to understand that in the realm, in the spiritual realm, you have people that are that, 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 that really tap in, but they tap in from the dark perspective. That means that when they go into the spirit, they just want information because they want to get gained financially. Why do you think all these psychics, huh? All these psychics that be online or that's been online, now they're getting caught up in how you find them in their lives? Because it's not about your life and about the wellness of your soul, but it's about the money that they can get from doing something that's familiar. That's why we have to be careful with the, with the familiar spirits that are around us. Because when we talk about this thing about psychics and those, amen, they are around. And sometimes you don't know that you're in the midst of one. You don't know that you're talking to them because they got a church hat on. Because they got a church dress on. They got them stockings with the diamonds and the pearls on the side of them. Huh? Because they got that, got that, got those Stacy Adams, huh? Huh? And he got that uh that old spice on, burning your nose. <laughs> somebody said, chill on that, chill out on that. <laughs> chill out on that. Yeah. Give some give somebody an asthma attack. <laughs> Amen. But those, those it looks familiar. Let me go to the scripture. Because I want you to hear what it says about uh about uh, this sorcery, about these psychics and things. The first scripture I want to reference from is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm gonna ver start from verse 9. It says this, when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, of course he's talking to the Israelites, he said be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. Y'all hear this? It says, and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord, your God, will drive them out ahead of you. What, what God is saying right here, and of course, this is Old Testament, but I'm about to give you some New Testament too. Because somebody said, well, that's Old Testament. That ain't new. I'm about to give you some New Testament too. But the thing, what God didn't want right here is that he didn't want them to connect to the wrong spirits. He didn't want them to connect to the wrong spirits because if they connect to those spirits of darkness, that it will be, it will inhabit in their life. Come on, somebody. It will inhabit in their life. So he was saying, listen, what they're doing is not real. They fake and phony. It's sort of like somebody that's impersonating. Amen. They don't have the full, the full value. They don't have the full uh, uh, look, the full gifting, the full value of the thing, but they, they're fine with just the look of it. And that's what he's saying. Listen, you will get so caught up in these things and you will find yourself going down the wrong path. Now, here's the classic question right here. Here's the classic question. Well, when I went to them, they told me, they told me some stuff that was true. <laughs> well, that's sure lot me in the spirit. You can go into the spirit from the dark perspective, meaning that the enemy have those that are in the spirit that are pulling things. That's why you got to be careful what you release in the atmosphere, because there are demons, there are devils, there's warlock, there's witches that are trying to grab what they, what's in the atmosphere, and then they want to come and preach to you. And see, what well, the thing is that they know how to present it, because when they give it to you and they get to put a little bit of truth in there, they got you, captivated. You know what that's called? A spell. You better be careful who preaching to you. And I'm telling you, all these psychics, they don't just have those buns over their head. 
I'm telling you, they look in a certain way. That's why the Bible says in that first John chapter, I mean first, first John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, try the spirit and see if that spirit is of God. It didn't say try that spirit and, and, and by the spirit. It said try that spirit and see if it be of God. Because if it's not of God, that means that they shouldn't have access in your life. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care how handsome they are. I don't care how they get ooh and hot and all that whatever. I don't care how they can sing to you. I don't care how they put their words together. You know, some people they put some words together. I don't care about that. You got to be able to call a spell out. You got you have to know when somebody's trying to play with your mind. When somebody's trying to play with you to get something that they want. It's those type of preachers that's out here. Come on, somebody. Huh? And I'm gonna tell you what, the church has become so naive because you know what? It's just like in, in the first of uh, Samuel chapter 28, when, when Saul was cut off from God. When he was cut off from God, you know what he did? Because he was going to battle. Instead of him waiting on God or trying to get to God, he said, you know what? God didn't answer. So I'm about to go to this meeting. And what I want this meeting to do, I want him to call up the dead. He said, I want him to call up Samuel, which is one. Samuel had died, but call Samuel up from the dead and wanted a consultant, a consultation from Samuel who was dead. Now check this out. If God, if you ever heard something from God, if God had said something to you, don't you think that you need to be still and wait on him? Don't you think that you need to wait and see what God's got to say? Because sometimes people will jump to this and jump to that, and you don't know what you're jumping into. You might jump into it and be crawling out of it. Come on, somebody. Jesus, we have to realize who this food is. Who is this preacher to me? Huh? How many of y'all, and I'm, I'm, I might be messy right here, but I, want, I just want y'all to think about it yourself. Have you been in the church and you knew that was a witch or a warlock in the pulpit? Y'all ain't got to say nothing. You got to go ahead. Huh? And y'all, I'm telling you, this thing is so real. It's so real because when you find that, have y'all ever seen the preacher or pastor? There's a lot of there's a lot of false prophets in the land, especially on Facebook. You see them left and right. You know, oh, you you you're a prophet, but you couldn't tell us that this pandemic was coming, huh? Oh, you, oh, oh, you didn't hear that, huh? I know you didn't hear because you ain't spent no time with God. Y'all see that right there? Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's going out, not coming in. Going out, not coming in. Going out, not coming in. Out, not coming in. I'm telling you, you expose the enemy. Whoa. When you expose the enemy, he gets mad. I'm telling you, that thing is real. You start talking about it. I ain't scared. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That thing mad right now, but I'm telling you, it's exposing time. You got to let, I got to know who you are. Who are you to the Lord to be able to speak to me? I don't care about your degree, but you need to have a degree in salvation. You need to have a degree in hearing the Lord. You need to have a degree. Faith coming by hearing. Hearing of what? The word of God. The word of God. Not of this other stuff. The word of God. There's enough in the word of God to speak you through any situation. I don't care what you go through. There's enough in the word of God to get you from here to there. It can take you from here to there. Whatever you need to go, there's enough in the word to help you out. That you ain't got to go to no dang old fortune teller. Be careful those folks that say, I'm spiritual. Well, I know you're spiritual, but what side are you on? Who's that Whose side are you leaning on? You got to let me know because I ain't got time for all this hell becoming my way because you up here acting a fool and you, you want to be connected to all this stuff. I need to know. Somebody say, I need to know. You need to know who's preaching in your spirit. Every smile on your face is not a friend. Huh? Sometimes you gotta you gotta look past the smile and look at the ears. Huh? Huh? Because they really try and break they, the, the smile is the real you in, but the ears are coming up, what's going on? Uh -huh. huh? You if you don't think that there's some folk around here in Shell Oak that got some workshops at the house, they got oh, some them rag voodoo dolls. If you don't think that's true, I'm here to let you know that there's some folk around this community that work in witchery. But how many of you know that if God be for you, hey! If God be for you, who can be against you? So I don't care if you're a witch or a woman, I'm a child of God. I don't even gotta be no pastor, I ain't gotta be no preacher. Listen, I'm a child of God. That means that I am covered by the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say I'm covered. I'm covered. Listen, that was a, that was an old testament. 
Boy, I'm, I'm running out of time. But check this out. <laughs> that was Old Testament. I want to get this New Testament right here. The Galatians 5, 19 through 21. The whole thing is good. It's all good. But it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature. Somebody say sinful nature. Okay. Let's keep right there. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust for pleasures, idolatry, sorcery. Right there, boom, right there, there it is. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, decision, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone leaving that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So we see this thing in what? In the New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not just an Old Testament teaching, is it? Talk to me. I'm sorry. Ask questions. <laughs> Amen. So it's, it, this thing is for right now. Right now. But we have to be so careful with those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say sorcery. Sorcery. Has limited access. I need for you to write that down in your notes if you have them. Sorcery has limited access. Limited access. I don't care about any of the giftings of, 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 the, of, of sorcery. The gifts that I'm worried about and that I care about is the gifts of prophecy. The dreamer, the dream interpreter. The discerner, the one that comes with the words of wisdom. Huh? Those, those are the things I'm worried about. Amen. So as we see that those, those that are in operation of sorcery, they're limited, they, they have limited access. Now I want to go to this right here and then I'll be done. I want to go deeper, but I'm going to be done right here. Okay? Because we talked about the psychics and all those that's in press and the sorcery. The next thing that I want to share with you is this. Somebody about to get mad, Brother Hoopy. <laughs> Pray my strength. You don't need to be following those horoscopes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, come on. Somebody say, go even deeper. Go even deeper. You ain't no Gemini. You ain't no Pisces. No, come on. Ain't no, I ain't no Aries. Yeah, I'm going to April. I ain't no Aries. All right. Let me give you some scripture. Yeah, I'm like, he trying to be messy. But he think he know everything. Yeah, he think he know everything. Well, you know that. Where's at the bottom? Well, here it is. Come on, Pastor. Here it is again. Here we go. <laughs> Isaiah 47, verse 13 through 14, it says this. And this is, this is talking in regards to um, the people of Judah, the people of Israel. It says, all the advice you receive has made you tired. Where are all your astrologers, those tra tra stargazers who make predictions each month? Let them stand up and save you from the future home, but they are like straw burning in a fire. They cannot save themselves from the flame. You will, you will get no help from them at all. Their heart, their hearth is no place to sit for warmth. All right? So how does that connect to the horoscopes? Because it says astrologers. Because they use astrology, astronomy yeah. to be able to form those horoscopes. Can I tell you this? The way that you are the way you are is not because you are Aries. It's because that's who you are on the inside. Yeah. Your flesh is dirty, yeah. your flesh is filthy, and you can get delivered. Yeah. That's what it is. It is not no sign. Yeah. The only sign that you have there is a sign you need to go to the altar and get delivered from that thing. Yeah. Well, I'm here to I'm, I'm, I'm you here to when you're going to No, that is not true. Yeah. That foolishness. Holy it's not. I bet not hear y'all come here with that mess. We're going to go to the altar. Because that is not of God. Yeah. I know that everybody doing it. I know everybody chilling. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm this is it's Capricorn season. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's fall. It's winter. It's summer. It's spring. Come on, come on. Come on somebody. Come on, somebody. Where we gonna be delivered from this stuff? This what we gonna be delivered from this stuff? So you want to let a horoscope, which is the, the scripture said is a prediction. You want to allow a prediction to dictate your life. When you got a God that knows everything. They got a God that sits high and looks low. That's in every inkling of your life. So you want to listen to a horoscope? That's why you got that no good woman or that no good man. Listen to that horoscope. 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 When we think about whores, we just think about prostitution. But baby, whores is when you uh, um, uh, commit adultery to the Lord as well. Yeah. The Bible could. Y'all read the Bible. <laughs> y'all think I'm on something today, but I'm telling the truth. Come on, 
Can you trust the no horoscope? Somebody didn't catch that. I ain't trusting it. I don't care about being no Aries. Shoot, I'm Michael. That's enough right there. Oh, Jesus. If I could get through a Michael's with this shit, I'd be all right. Amen. But we will get grabbed from these things. Check this out. Think about our meteorologist. Our meteorologists. Even though we respect them, how many times have they been wrong? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Right here, there, you know, because of course it makes sense to go to that, to that, to that, to that um, realm or to that atmosphere to be able to read something. Of course, of course it does. But they still can't make a promise. That's why they says forecast. Yeah. They don't say this is what's going to be. This is how it's going to happen. <laughs> huh? It's forecast, and that's what a horoscope is—a is forecast. It is not the real thing. It does not know what you need. Come it is on, guessing. Yeah. It's guessing. I know some folk ain't gonna like it, but I don't care. <laughs> and the horse gonna make tell me that. Amen. <laughs> but it's the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing of what? The word of God. We're gonna be excited about the word of God speaking to us. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be excited that when we open up the word of God, that we have an opportunity to transform in that moment. Yeah. We're going to be excited that, you know what, God, he has a word for me to build my faith. I don't need no horoscope. I don't need no newspaper. I need the word of God. Faith coming by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. If you want your faith to grow in this season, God said, get in the word a little bit more. Connect with a preacher so that they can preach to you. I'm not just talking about the clergy. I'm talking about the disciples of Jesus Christ. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to level up, Somebody say level up. Level up. In the word. In the word. Come on. Say level up. Level up. In the word. In the word. Hey, man, you got to get deeper in the word. If you got questions, ask the preacher. If you got some concerns, ask the preacher. But don't spend your time with no psychic or no soothsayer. Huh? You better connect with something that got the anointing of God. That can allow God to come through them in the river world to struggle in their life. That is the privilege of being a child of God. That is the privilege of being a preacher of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this. That what you have in your spirit right now. Who told you that? Huh? That decision you made. Who told you that? Huh? There's some folk that will reel you in and make you do some things that they wouldn't even do themselves. That's called assignment of the, of the enemy. Huh? Who told you that? Well, who told you that? Who told you that? Today, you need to be mindful of who speaks in your ear. And when I say who, I don't mean faces. I mean the spirits that speak to you. There's some folk at work that smile in your face because they're trying to set you up because they want your job. Huh? There's some folk that will say they love you. Why? Because they want your place. Huh? Be careful who's speaking to your marriage. Huh? Because they give you some stuff so they can have your man. Have your woman. Y'all ain't hear me today. You have got to be careful. You have got to be careful. Faith comes by hearing. The word of God. The word of God. Check this out. The Bible even says, and we read it, how can, how can the preacher go unless he be sent? God is sending. But we got to receive the preacher. Listen, even on even the preachers like, like me, I guess you could say. Listen, there are some, still some preachers in the earth that is doing the will of God. There are still some. Don't let nobody get in your head to the point of, you know, I hate old preaching. They ain't nothing but hypocrites anyway. Don't let anybody get in your head like that. You have to, listen, you have to try the spirit and see if that spirit of God. That means for every individual, you have to try it. You can't just make that assumption that all preachers want your money. Y'all y'all know I don't want your money. Y'all know that. Amen. This is evidence right here that everybody ain't like that. Huh? Y'all don't see no Roy's voice out there, do you? Yeah. And so I drive that Honda faithfully. So I was I was ready for us to get that because so I could y'all said I got that, that charger parked out there because I want that Honda. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, realize this, know this. Be careful. Be careful what comes into your ear gates. Be careful what even enter your eye gates. Because those things will take root and take seed into your life. And you're like, what is going on? Somebody has planted something that should not be in your life. That's why you got to stay in the word, grow in the word, so that you can know 
on the top right. Mm. That's how that's how really your discernment gets even stronger. Word, the word, eat the word. If you're not reading every day, listen, you are you are hurting your armor. If you read but not but one scripture a day, read it. Marinate on that thing all day. And I promise you, a lot of times that one scripture that's given to you. <laughs> come on, sister Me. She always helped me. Thank you. I can listen to her. <laughs> Amen. But it's the truth. It's enough. Everybody stand to your feet. That's all I got for you today. Amen. 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 Repeat after me. Who told you that? Who told you that? We got to ask questions. And sometimes it's not even the verbal of saying that. Sometimes it's just you say it in your mind and you say it in your spirit. Who told you that? Ooh, there's some conniving, cunning people that comes into your midst. Hallelujah. But thank God for his spirit. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his anointing. We want our faith to go to a different level, but we don't want it to be contaminated by anything that's not of God. The preacher's going to come to my life. He needs to be a preacher of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Sasha, I wanted to say this, that greater levels for you. Greater levels. Why? Why? I hear this. I hear you've been responsible in the heat of things. It's not easy. They said greater levels. There's some things that, as far as the answer of your prayers is going to be your elevation, but those things being left behind. So I just want you to, I want you, I want you to uh, really seek God. Go, go deeper, because I'm telling you, greater levels, greater levels, greater levels. There's some things that's not going to grow, it's just dead. Woo! Jesus, just dead. But what God has for you, what God is doing in you and through you, it has to, it's sort, it's sort of like show, God showed, showed it to me just now, just like this. It's like somebody in the water and they're going down and they're coming up and they trying to get their breath. That's why he got to take you to that next level because you got to, you got to breathe. Hey! Whoa. Greater levels. Hey! Greater levels. Greater levels. I'm telling you, greater levels. Ooh, God is doing the work. God is doing the work. He sees the yearning. He sees you. He sees you. He sees you. Ah, he sees you. Woo. He sees you. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 You just, you just even the, the breathing in the atmosphere is going to be different for you. It's going to be different. It's going to be like, it's like when you go to the mountain and the air is just clear, more crisp. It's just, Ha! Yes. Whew. The power. Whew. The power. Whoa. You've been in the spiritual weight room and you're not even realizing. He building you, strengthening you. I don't know nothing. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know nothing. Nobody tell me nothing. But I'm telling you what I hear. But you've been, he, God got you in the spiritual weight room right now. Whoa. It's like he's, he's building you. You don't even realize, but he's building you. He's building you. Woo. When you're in the rape room, when you're in the weight room, you get tired sometimes, but you still you keep going. You keep going. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. about the anointing that he placed inside of you. He said that the anointing that he's placed inside of you, that's why you're making it, even in frustration. But he said, don't you forget about the anointing that's inside of you. He said that the anointing that he has put inside you, that there's still places that you've got to go. There are still people that has to hear your voice. The worship that's in your belly, there is still a deliverance in your belly through your singing. And God said that he is breathing on you right now. Because he said he's resuscitating every day that the enemy tried to make dead. Hey! Oh. But it's, it's not going to die. Oh. You're going to live. Your anointing is going to live. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And then I'm going to say, can I say, keep fanning, keep fanning. But I'm going to say, can I just tell you this? Woo! That thing has to go. Woo, the enemy has no place. We rebuke him. Better than we'll see. We rebuke the enemy. Right now. There you go. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Robert. I need you to go walk to that door. I need you to walk. Can you stand right here? I need you to walk. And I need for you to touch Lady Front's hand seven times. Seven times. Keep fanning her. Keep fanning her. I know your arms getting tired, but that's that. Woo! Good. Go walk seven times. That was one. You're gonna touch her, touch her hand. Please. Six. Six. 